Hi there, and welcome to Real Talk in ELT, a podcast about the reality of teaching English. I'm your host, Kelly Pennington. Thank you for joining me today. Okay, so let's jump into the very messy and highly controversial topic of native versus non-native speakers. This is my opinion, this is my experience, and here's what I have to say about this topic. Just because you're born in a specific place, your place of origin, doesn't mean that you're going to be a better or worse teacher of English. If you want to fairly judge English teachers, then you need to base it on whether or not they are proficient in the language that they are trying to teach and if they have teaching qualifications. Now, this isn't necessarily the case for all native speakers. I personally have encountered several native speakers of English who have terrible proficiency or who are undereducated. And I've had the experience of meeting non-native speakers who have higher proficiency than native speakers. So the question in regards to the language and the proficiency of the teacher should really be about the proficiency of that teacher's spoken language. And this can be proven. Uh, It can be proven over and over again through various forms. There's lots of tests and that proves it's, you know, a certification that this person can produce high levels of English. Not all native speakers would be able to pass those types of tests. Um, And they're academically driven and they're focused in a specific type of English. But, you know, that is one way of qualifying a teacher. And another way is through just teaching qualifications. And teachers need to have this. Teachers need to be able to perform in a teaching scenario. Um, I personally did not get formally trained through my universities as a language teacher. I did not take a traditional route. So So my formal education, I was taking courses and I graduated with a business background and business degree. I then transitioned over to be a language teacher and I did so through not only experience, but certifications, teaching certifications. Um, There's several other professionals that do this, that they don't originally start out as a professional teacher and then they move into the academic and education area. There are some teachers that go and get formal education and their courses, their graduating courses are related to education in some way, shape or form. And that's great. Um, So I think that we need to reduce this idea of native versus non-native and we need to start thinking, are you proficient and are you qualified? Uh, Those should be the criteria and not necessarily your place of origin because even saying it out loud sounds kind of ridiculous. If you went to any other professional area, let's say engineering, and said, because I was born in Canada, I am a better engineer based on my place of origin, my birth certificate, than any engineer that comes out of Italy. Well, that just sounds absolutely ridiculous. Your nationality obviously does not dictate your professional readiness. So it should not dictate your professional capacity as a teacher as well. Now I'm talking about professional readiness and professional capacity, and we all have the capacity to do whatever we want to do in our professional careers. We have the capacity. Now, there's also a difference for me when we talk about experience, because When we have an English teacher who has experience in other fields, that is an added bonus. And I think that's how students should look at it. It's an added bonus. For example, my personal history, I've had experience in military service, corporate America, small private practices, and the education system in the United States. So because of all of that experience, I can speak to some of those issues because I have experience with them. Things that I don't have experience in are things that I can't speak to. Now I can educate myself as much as possible 
and you know interview and subject matter experts and research about a certain area but I don't have that experience so I I can't really develop a full comprehension of that idea when we think about teachers and specifically teachers for English with specific purposes or business English teachers we have to also consider those experiences and not that it makes a teacher better or worse but it makes a teacher have an added value for a specific student. And if we were being honest with ourselves, wouldn't we want more qualified teachers that had this added bonus in contact with students who truly needed it? So the idea for me in terms of native, non-native, I think that's a very antiquated and colonized way of looking at English language teachers. And so I think we need to kind of remove that distinction and we need to start imparting some other distinctions within the within the area. And the criteria for me, and this is just my opinion, would be based on whether the teacher is proficient or not in the language, whether the teacher has the teaching credentials and the teacher training to be able to deliver successful classes and help students reach their objectives. And as a bonus to students, if a teacher has experience in a specific area, it will only enrich those classes and the content and the discussions that happen within that class because the teacher is not only a language expert, they also are a subject matter expert or they have some experience in that subject matter. So those for me are more qualifying when we're talking about professional teachers than a birth certificate. Unfortunately, I see this division and I I see these groups kind of being very divisive in terms of distinguishing between native and non-native, especially in social media. Social media is one of the worst, uh, one of the worst platforms in terms of creating this division because it's such a competitive area in terms of people trying to sell their products uh, to the masses. And they're really interested not in the quality of the education that they're providing to the students, but the quantity of memberships and and sales that they get. So I think that that is one major issue and it continually continually propagates this idea of a division between native and non-native language teachers, which again, for me, seems to be ridiculous. And the other pet peeve of mine is language schools trying to use native teachers as a promotional tool. Uh, you shouldn't really do that. You're really kind of taking advantage not only of the teacher that's trying to work for you, but also you're taking advantage of this kind cr- of corrupted and and misguided idea of students uh, in the marketplace and and for me it's just a it's a question of ethics if you're on social media or if you're a language school promote that your teachers are proficient promote that your teachers are qualified promote that your teachers have some sort of experience in their specified areas and can add uh, more value to the classes of the learners don't try and use these misguided promotional tactics and get more students let's be focused on the quality of education as opposed to the quantity of memberships that you sell to your your exclusive club or the the number of sales that you have in a specific course. So for me, it's more about let's try and shift the focus from native and non-native. And that just, just seems to be this bizarre idea that is still lingering around in the language world. And let's shift the focus to proficiency, qualifications, and added value, and really focus on delivering quality courses and quality education so that these people who are our students, and let's remember that they really are people. Let's remember to give them and put the priority of their communication and their ability to do their jobs, to travel, to communicate with other language communities and different cultural groups. Let's put that above sales figures. So thanks so much for joining me today. I had a blast. I'm not sure if you share my opinion or not, but there's my opinion on native versus non-native language teachers. Next episode, stay tuned. I'm going to dig into what it means to be a young learner's or children's English teacher and why I can't be one. (laughs) Ready to join the conversation? Head on over to Instagram at Real Talk in ELT Podcast or on at English with Kelly and send me a message. 
That's it for me. Take care of yourself, your health, your vibe, and your tribe. Until next time.